Son las 4 de la mañana en Phoenix, Arizona, y estamos todavía a 29 grados. Esto es Dison, el barrio de los sin techo. How old are you, babe? 69. 69. Son los hijos del baby boom, nacidos entre 1946 y 1964. La generación de la bonanza de Estados Unidos se encuentra ahora en la calle, entre jóvenes drogadictos. Two people died over here. Right here? Nights ago, a gal got Oh, raped. yeah. Yeah, I heard yeah, that. And then uh, I had a ranch I gave to my daughter. And I just couldn't handle it no more. Son las seis y media. Peter Moya, senior de 62 años, se pone en marcha llevando a Superman en brazos. Have a good day, brother. How you doing, my brother? My name Moya in Spain means winner or champion. I started that limousine business out of the flu, and we just flourished. We just it just flourished. And my name of the company was SP Transportation, strictly professional. I've had big names like uh, Diana Ross, Holly Berry, Carlos Santana. Bet Mittler, Barry Manilow, they were all my clients. And then my wife got sick. And uh, some of my big clients said, Pete, don't, don't shut the company down. We got plans. No brainer. My wife needed me right there and there. So I had to, I had to shut down. She needed me 24 hours. She uh, was on dialysis, and uh, I was getting two hours of sleep a night. I was taking care of her, going to, going to work to try to get some bills paid and uh, went through my savings. Uh, doc doctors ate, ate up $65,000 in four months. In between that time, uh, we got separated, me and my wife. Con su pensión de invalidez de 1,300 dólares, mantenía también a la viuda de su mejor amigo hasta que le pasó lo mismo que a muchos que están en la calle. El alquiler subió de 700 a 1,500 dólares en tres meses. The last two years, I've lived in and out of some shelters and uh, on the street in my car. I, I, I saved one of my town cars in my company, and I was living in there. And here recently, a month ago, the car finally took a caput on me, and I, I couldn't afford to fix it. So I had the junkyard come pick it up, and I came straight. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was sleeping on the streets behind a building. This goes in the garbage. Durante el día. Peter suele acudir a Yasta Center, una ONG para mayores sin hogar. Aquí tienen desayuno, comida y cena, y sobre todo aire acondicionado. Un alivio teniendo en cuenta que las temperaturas en el exterior alcanzan los 48 grados este verano. Rudy Solís es uno de los directores del Yasta Center. Él mismo estuvo cinco años viviendo en la calle y el Jasta Center le ayudó a salir adelante. Pero eran otros tiempos. It's become really bad. Before COVID, we were able to move people in. It was easier for us to move them in. There was more government vouchers, there was more government assistance. COVID hit and put a stop to that. And then the after COVID is the effect of these apartment complexes going up sky high. And uh, people on social security, their, their limit is $800. And if you're making $800 a month and all of a sudden your rent goes up $200 more, well, your neighbor can pay it, but you're facing homelessness. For the first time in your life, you're being evicted and put on the street. And there's no way, nobody thinks twice about it. We had a 90-year-old lady that called for all, all her life. She'd never been homeless. She never knew nothing about it until the new landlords bought it, the new owners bought it. And they gave her 10 days to, to leave. They evicted her. 10 days. And she was put on the street. Las personas mayores de 55 años que viven solas son quienes corren mayor riesgo de acabar sin hogar en Estados Unidos. Pero los ancianos mueren rápidamente en la calle, sobre todo por enfermedad. Yeah. <laughs> 
Donna May Wilson, de 62 años, lleva más de dos años sin hogar. Es veterana de guerra. Su padre era capitán de un portaaviones. Fue a la universidad, fue gerente de una tienda y se quedó sin hogar por circunstancias trágicas. A pesar de todo, conserva su humor negro. A sus 61 años, Deborah Flame jamás habría imaginado que algún día se quedaría sin hogar por una subida de alquiler. Tiene epilepsia que puede resultar mortal si vive en las calles de Phoenix en verano. So hot, so hot. See? Oh. Over here. Ooh. Here. That was skin graft. What well, concrete asphalt? The concrete. If you know, I was at a bus stop. So what it's around it? I felt I had a seizure, grandma seizure, and fell on the concrete. And was flopping like a fish for 10 minutes before paramedics got to me. Because our average temperature of the concrete and pavement in Phoenix, Arizona is 178 degrees, according to the news station. I have fourth, fifth, and sixth degree burns over 30% of my body because I was on the concrete for about 10 minutes before paramedics got to me. And this is, they had to take, do a skin graft from my thigh to, I had burned the back of my arm to a sixth degree burn. And that is this arm now, the one that we had shown before. That's what it looks like. I don't know if you can get both or... <laughs> en el Yasta Center hay recursos digitales de los que las personas mayores sin hogar no suelen disponer. Por ejemplo, ordenadores con acceso a Internet, teléfonos móviles y, sobre todo, estaciones de carga. Peter quiere comprobar el estado de su cuenta. Después, llama al banco desde el teléfono del Yasta Center. Uh, I'm trying to get into my account online to update my address, but it won't let me get in. It's saying uh, too many attempts to get in my account to try again later. This has been since yesterday morning. Everything was, lo everything was lost in the move. I, I, I got robbed, I got robbed, and they took my, uh, they took my suitcase with all my paperwork in it, and, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an old man, I, I'm without a vehicle. I, I'm calling you from a company phone because I don't even have my cell phone because I got robbed of it. And I got robbed for my, for my phone and my shoes at gunpoint, uh, some young kid. He, he, he woke me up, and then, then he said, let me have your money. I said, I ain't got no money. You might as well just shoot me. And he didn't, so I know God had something to do with that. And that next morning, I thought, what the hell am I going to do? I, I'm, I'm out here behind a building, sleeping. Son historias que Rudy conoce bien, sobre todo de la generación del baby boom, nacida tras la Segunda Guerra Mundial, que vivió un auge económico y un progreso sin precedentes en la historia de la humanidad en Estados Unidos y en Phoenix, Arizona. I think there's about 70% of seniors now. 70. 70. It's, the senior population is outdoing the, the younger the younger group. These are the people that built America to where it is now. Why are we hurting them like that? You know, they broke their backs to do what we did to have what we have. And I don't know, I don't know the answer really, to be honest with you. But I just see that if somebody doesn't step up and be serious about this, instead of just throwing the millions of dollars around, 
the senior population will outgrow most of all of it. And then what's going to happen with the, the population coming below them? It's going to triple it. And society is not looking at that. Our government officials aren't looking at that. 1,500 personas sin hogar viven en Dison, cerca del centro de la ciudad. Phoenix lleva años en auge de crecimiento, ya que muchos empresarios y trabajadores se trasladan de California a Phoenix, que es más barato. Phoenix es una ciudad en el desierto de San Valley, condado de Maricopa. Por su parte, el ayuntamiento está orgulloso del crecimiento. We not only have a lot of baby boomers in, in our community, um, but knowing that they're on fixed incomes and when uh, housing prices do increase and their rent may increase dramatically, they're not able, their, their income is not increasing, so they're not able to keep up with it. So here in Maricopa County, we are finding that people over the age of 55 on fixed income is one of the fastest growing populations of people experiencing homelessness. What we really need to do is focus on preventing people from coming into homelessness. Until we are really able to help prevent as many people, keep as many people housed as we can, we're, we'll sort of always be in this crisis mode of trying to find some place for them to go, some place safe for them to be, and necessary resources to help them get back into housing. So really that's where the city is not only focusing on those immediate crisis situations, but preventing people from um, going into homelessness and then helping them exit quickly into housing. But this is also a question of changing the laws. How is it possible that house owners in Phoenix, Arizona, or Arizona can lift up the rent that quickly? Well, so we as the city of Phoenix are helping to create new affordable housing. We, we fund new developments constantly. Um, my team, in fact, we just bought a hotel that we are converting into affordable housing. It'll be specifically for older adults, age 55 and older, um, who are very low income. Según un recuento oficial, en enero de 2023 había 9.642 personas sin hogar en el condado de Maricopa, Phoenix incluido, y el 49% de ellas no contaba con refugio nocturno de emergencia. De los 1.500 sin techo en Dison, Phoenix, al menos 900 personas cuentan con un refugio por la noche, mientras que 600 duermen a la intemperie. Como Vicky Eichelberger, de 68 años, soltera. Perdió primero su piso en Nebraska y después su documentación de camino a Arizona, con lo cual no existe para las autoridades estadounidenses. I worked at a feedlot for 38 years, and I started working when I was about nine, mowing yards, raking yards. I've worked all my life. Yeah, I finally got my teeth today after they were stolen. And they was only two weeks old when I moved down here. They stole them from the, where I had my clothes and stuff. I had my clothes stolen three times since I've been here. And the last time they stole my clothes, they took my teeth right out of the container that they, the, that they was in the cleaner with. Yeah, I'm surprised that I see people my age or older that are homeless. I mean, I'm not really homeless. I just got to wait to get my ID and my social security so I can even fill out an app to even get an apartment because they're, they're going to want all that information. Otherwise, I wouldn't be down here. I mean, I might be crazy, but I ain't stupid. I wouldn't want this kind of life. Vicky acude a la oficina de su asistente social en el campus de servicios humanos, un área de Dison con 16 ONG, donde se presta apoyo a las personas sin hogar, sean jóvenes o mayores. Hoy Vicky está tramitando su nuevo seguro médico, un proceso importante en su camino para volver a existir para las autoridades y los propietarios. Yeah, this is a Vicky Eichelberger, and I need to talk to an agent about my health insurance. EI. C-H-E-L-B-E-R-G-E-R. -E -E I'm just waiting to get the insurance card through the mail because they mailed it to the wrong address. Well, you can see if that's the insurance I got, I guess if that's who I have to talk to. <laughs>
No. God, I hate talking to a automated this. No. I like to talk to a live person. Transfer me to an advocate. This is Vicki Eichelberger. E-I-C-H-E-L-B-E-R-G-E-R. -E -E well, yeah, see, they, they sent the new card to address 206, and it's, I don't know how they got that address, but the address is 232 12th Avenue, Phoenix, Arizona. Después de media hora al teléfono, la tarjeta del seguro llega a servicios humanos tras unos días. Cada año, aquí reciben ayuda 12.000 personas sin hogar. Amy Schwabelander es la directora general de la organización que agrupa a las 16 ONG. Observa las fotos de las personas que han encontrado casa y desde la ventana de su oficina a los 600 sin techo a los que no pueden dar cobijo por la noche. It hurts me every day. It, it hurts me to know that the resources are available in the U.S. to be able to help everyone. And we're not doing it as a society. It hurts me that we're not treating homelessness as a public health crisis. We know housing is health care. People can't be healthy without a home. Yet we can have almost 600 people living right around us and all the organizations here are doing everything they can to connect people to services, put them on a path to housing, but we can't end homelessness today for every single person. We are standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise him, praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Thank you. Father. Father, precious spirit, spirit, spirit. Hey, how are you? How you doing? You doing better? Good, good. Sobre las cinco, Peter se dirige al campus de servicios humanos para pasar allí la noche. Una vez allí, hace el registro. Thank you. Appreciate you guys' work. Go home, buddy. Go home. Get a good night for us, okay? De noche solo podemos acompañarlo hasta la puerta del dormitorio. Vicky Eichelberger llegó a Phoenix en enero. Al principio pensaba quedarse con una amiga, pero el plan se torció. Sin documentación no podía ni alquilar una habitación aunque recibe una pensión de más de 1.300 dólares mensuales. Vicky conoce los dormitorios del campus de servicios humanos. See, I did stay in there for three and a half months when I came here in January. But there's too much drama and all the women are fighting and screaming at each other. And I'm an outside person anyway, so I just prefer to be outside. Well, how is it here at night? Well, you always got people arguing and fighting. There ain't a night that goes by that there ain't something that happens. But if it don't involve me, I just mind my own business. I mean, if they come and give me shit, I'm gonna give them shit back. Vicky lleva un mes esperando en vano su carnet de identidad, que debería llegar en cinco o diez días. A la mañana siguiente, nos dejan grabar en el dormitorio de Peter, después de poner un poco de orden tras una noche agitada. This is where I lay my head down at night. 
after I take care of my business during the day. This is it. Yeah, didn't sleep at all last night. Superman was up and about, uh, got keen hearing. He helps me with my hearing. So the thunder and the lightning had him startled. So uh, it, it was a bad storm. It was, it was our monsoon season that comes in every night. And um, it, we didn't sleep last night at all. <laughs> Peter sigue luchando con un abogado para reclamar la pensión de su primer empleador, que son 2.200 dólares. Con la pensión de invalidez serían 3.500 dólares al mes, una buena suma. Espera solucionarlo para el año que viene. Entonces puede que vuelva a Glob, su lugar de nacimiento, que se encuentra a 145 kilómetros de Phoenix. Sus padres y abuelos, inmigrantes de España y Nuevo México, eran sumamente pobres, pero ganaron un buen dinero en las minas de cobre de Glaub. Su padre hizo carrera en el sindicato, por eso se mudaron a Phoenix cuando Peter tenía 10 años. De 11 hermanos y hermanas, Peter es el único que aún vive. En el cementerio busca la tumba de su abuelo, sin éxito. Aunque sí encuentra la de su abuela. They're all dead. I don't know why God left me. To get a break. It's lonely, just a lonely, ugly, ugly feeling. like it was yesterday. 50 years just gone, you know. I get tired of trying to get me out of this situation. I don't know what I'm doing situation. With that same blood that runs through them, it runs through me, so I'll get out of this. I don't, I've got no time for no bullshit, though. I've got a, I want some peace in my life. Peace is all I want. I think I needed to come out of here just... I hurt myself today to see if I still feel I focus on the pain the only thing that's real Los propietarios de negocios de la zona comercial de Dison demandaron a la ciudad de Phoenix por las 600 personas sin hogar que viven en tiendas de campaña delante de sus negocios cerca del campus de servicios humanos un juez ordenó el desalojo. El ayuntamiento lleva varios meses intentando buscar refugios para todos, junto con las ONG. La Universidad de Pensilvania calcula que para el año 2026 habrá 225.000 personas mayores de 55 años viviendo en la calle en Estados Unidos, lo que significa un 32% más que en 2017.